Through a chance encounter in Nashville back in 2006, Benjamin and Cassie Wilson were sure of each other from the very start. This eclectic duo is called Gold Pine, and their music brings strong emotion and has been described as moody and relevant, exposing the pains of severed relationships and unearthing the pursuits of love and purpose. After nearly a decade of honing in on their sound, they have released their debut album, One. Laced with incredible vocal harmonies and passionate lyrics, One is the perfect introduction to Gold Pine's music. And they were presented the Discovery Award in 2018 by acclaimed music critic Robert K. Orman from the Music Row magazine. And Ben and Cassie have been offering their own brand of raw Americana to audiences large and small. Winner of the 2022 Rocky Mountain Songwriter Contest, the duo's bold harmonies are clearly a channel for their highly charged songwriting. So without further ado, let's welcome the Americana folk duo Gold Pine, Ben and Cassie Wilson, to the show. Welcome. Hey, thank, thank you for you. having us. Thanks Glad for having us. Well, I will tell you one thing. I've been listening to that amazing album one that we will get to here in a moment. And uh, But I have I understand that both of you have been married for 13 years now. How did you meet? Yeah, we... We've been married, we've been together for about 15 and a half years, married 13. We met at a small startup church that was meeting in the cafeteria of a school um, in a suburb of Nashville in Antioch. And it was crazy. There was only like maybe 15 people at the church. I was visiting, Ben was playing in the praise and worship band, which was Ben and one other person. <laughs> and so him and brother Leroy, and I just seen Ben and I thought he was so cute. Uh, I looked past what he was wearing because he needed help. <laughs> but he was, I just was so drawn to him. And uh, I was joking when I told my girlfriend, I was like, I'm going to marry him. And I did. Wow. <laughs> now, now, Ben, when you were leading worship, did you look out there and go, oh, there's the one? I was honestly, I wasn't thinking that she was the one, but I did notice her and I, and she stuck, uh, stood out from other people. I was like, man, you know, she's, she's cute. And I like the way she dresses. She sets herself apart a little bit. And there weren't many choices. Oh. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. well, the good thing is you like the way she dressed because obviously she helped you. Yes. Yeah. yeah. She always likes to make that point. And she says she remembers exactly what I was wearing when we met K-Swiss shoes and a yellow polo shirt. And khaki. She said I needed help, so I think I'm doing yeah, all right. Yeah, I, I kind of ditched the khakis a long time ago. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree with that, that change right there. Well, for both of you, what kind of music did you uh, both grow up on uh, listening to? And, what, and how did that influence your current style? Well, we couldn't be more different in in our music taste growing up. So growing up, I listened to, it was crazy because my mom and dad, like remember back in the day, the, the five disc CD player? Mm -hmm. <laughs> remember those? Keep the party going. Uh, so I just remember like, you, I would hear like Toby Keith, then Lionel Richie, then Eric Clapton, then Clarence Carter. And it was just like this eclectic mix. So I was just really, open to so many different things and it just kind of poured in but really my favorite thing and what i gravitated toward was like r&b and soul and i loved uh, boys to men like i remember that was probably one of my first cds and i got my walkman and i just remember putting my my headphones on and listening to this the their cd over and over and over and over and uh, I just I just loved that kind of music. But as far as how that translates into now, you know, I think I have a country soul kind of voice. And so I just think that being open and um, just influenced by so many different genres has made my kind of style unique. And so but I just I just love the soul. Well, how well, long have you been singing? <laughs> I've been singing, I've been singing since I was a little girl, you know, and I started singing it in school and choir and, and at my grand, at my papa's church. But really I just started just probably when I was like in junior high school. Mm -hmm. Well, what about you, Ben? I grew up listening to, well, 
a lot of contemporary Christian music and then uh, into alternative rock music. So like I remember a very influential record for me was Counting Crows, August and Everything After. Um, man, I just, the way that Adam from Counting Crows could show his emotion through the tones in his voice and through the words he was saying was just so influential to me. And so I grew up with a lot of that stuff. I didn't listen to any country music whatsoever until I, after I moved to Nashville, which was uh, 06. And so, like she was saying, we came from so different backgrounds. And it wasn't easy putting those two backgrounds together to try to make a, a whatever genre we are. Uh, but we got over that hump. And like you mentioned, I think that what we created from our differences is a pretty cool, a pretty cool thing. So it's pretty unique. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you bring up the counting of crows and you talk about the emotion. And I think that we have artists today that know how to bring forth emotion. And we have a lot of them that just singing the words and, and playing the instruments and doing the concert and that's it. And I think emotion is the most important thing and if somebody doesn't really have a great vocal range, for an example, but they have the emotion, it still sells a song. Mm -hmm. It really does. And it's interesting to look at different genres and, and how they deal with emotion. Uh, you know, singer songwriter and Americana, you can really tell stories and be emotional about it. And that's what it's kind of known for. But then you have other genres maybe more mainstream and pop genres that the emotion really isn't as much of a, a part of it. And so I'm glad to be where we are. Uh, emotion and storytelling and connecting with an audience through a certain thing is a huge part of what we do as music musicians. Well, for both of you, what's the inspiration or what inspiration do you draw from in your own songwriting? For me, <laughs> songwriting is like, therapy for me. So I, I tend to write about family a lot. And that's where a lot of my inspiration comes from. Like, we write a lot about personal experiences, you know, things that are near and dear to our heart, things that we've struggled with things we've gone through or our family member has I mean, when, when people come to our shows, we always say that we want them to feel like that they had read our diaries. And we just try to be as open and honest and transparent as we can um, to be able to connect with people. So for me, it's therapy and just writing about things that are close to the heart. So for both of you, if you're writing a song, um, is it just an idea that pops in your head or is it based on a life experience or is it just something that hits your spirit and all of a sudden you, you've got a pen and paper before you? A lot of times it is a life experience, uh, like, she was mentioning struggles that we go through or struggles that family members have gone through. Uh, but I will say it just seems like at least maybe for our, for our type of genre, people start out and they want to write such heartfelt songs and they have such feelings that they want to get out, maybe a breakup or whatever. And then the more that you write songs throughout the years, it almost seems like you have to branch out a little bit because you can't always feel those broken feelings for 10, 20 years in a row. And so I think I've started branching out now and, mm -hmm. and writing more story songs. Uh, like I'm, I'm writing a song right now where all the stereos in the world stop working mysteriously and then it uh, eventually leads to a, uh, another civil war. <laughs> so just making up songs but that still have a purpose and a point and something that you can really connect with people and talk about like before the song, during the live show. So yeah, I guess I'm branching out a little bit. You like John Prine? John Prine is one of my favorites. Of well, my favorites. you know, you can't get any better than that. <laughs> I mean, the guy's a legend and you know, it, it's amazing that, you know, when I talk to so many recording artists that the, the ideas or their approach to songwriting every single person is completely different. I mean, for Cassie, for you, what is, what is your approach to a song or to writing one? Again, I mean, I have to be, I feel like I have to be inspired and I'm working on that because Ben, 
he's so disciplined and he writes to write and he makes it um, a priority because it is. But for me, it's harder because I need to fill, I need to um, have a reason to write and I need to get over that. Um, I'm working on it. He's very good at keeping me in line because <laughs> I need guidance. <laughs> But, well, let's talk about your debut album one. Mm -hmm. So what kind of approach did you take to such writing a strong set of songs? Well, I think a lot of those songs actually probably started five to 10 years ago. Um, you know, in songwriting, sometimes you get, you get half of a song and you feel like you just are stuck there and nothing else is coming. And you come back to it a month later, a year later, you might get a little bit more and then a, more a year later and you might finish it five years later. And a couple of those songs on there, that's what happened. But then there are a few, like one I'm thinking of in particular called I Think of You, that Cassie pretty much wrote all the lyrics on and it came to you within, what, an hour? Yeah, it, it, it came so quickly and after effortlessly we we take walks in our neighborhood all the time and we were taking a walk and um one of our elderly neighbors were out and she was kind of chasing her dog because it has kind of gotten loose and we grabbed it and she apologized and said you know i i, I kind of just feel brain confused she said my husband just passed away and we were like oh my gosh and they had been together for 78 years was that right Maybe. 78 years wow. and um in some form or facet and she invited us in and we sat on her couch and she told us stories about his nickname was slugger and she told us these stories and we looked at pictures and just heard about all the things in this neighborhood before we had even lived here for years you know how dave ramsey was lived here and he was her neighbor it was all these things and so i came home and I went up into um, my, my closet. Ben built me a beautiful walk-in closet and it has a window. And I just sat in there and I was trying to put myself in her position of how I would feel if Ben had passed away. And I just wrote the song just like less than an hour. And then I was like, look, I wrote this. And honestly, we love the song so much, but we didn't put it on the last well, we didn't make it a single before this album because it was very similar to the song about my mom, you know? Um, and so we were just waiting for the time to be right. And it was the time now was for it to come out. And that's well, been years I must say, now I, I listen, I have listened to the album over and over again. And that's the God honest truth. I must say that one of my favorite songs on the new one album is I think of you mm -hmm. now. I sat there and of course I go when I, when I'm listening to somebody's uh, album, I, I, I do the first run, you know, I'm listening to each song, trying to get the feel of the whole album. And then I go back and I start listening much deeper, almost mentally dissecting. So when I'm listening to, I think of you, I was sitting here one day and I could literally hear the likes of Bonnie Raitt, Winona, Jennifer Nettles singing that type of song. And I love how the chorus just rises from such a, a melodic beat. It, it starts acoustically and moves into this flowing electric guitar melody, adding a bit of moodiness, I guess I, I would call it. So in my opinion, this is literally a hit song. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. You know, and, and seriously, uh, every, I mean, every song on this album is amazing. And, and I want to talk about one of your brand new singles, When I Get to Heaven. Uh, mm -hmm. Tell us about that song and how faith plays out in your music and your life. That was a song that, like I mentioned before, it started quite a while ago and just couldn't finish it and uh, finally did finish it. And it turned out to be so cool, cool enough that we put it out as a single on the album, as one of the singles. Um, you know, when I started writing that song, I kind of, you know, the stresses of life and the worries of life can really easily get a person down. And I feel like, especially with me, like, I feel like I'm prone to 
thinking on the negative side sometimes. And there's a place that I go in my imagination some uh, during those heavy times. And it's a place uh, kind of like a heavenly place, but it's out in the, in the grass, long waving grass, and it's underneath this tree. And I'm sitting there with Jesus. And you know, in the Gospels, it talks about one of the disciples reclined on Jesus. I thought, wow, <laughs> like reclining on Jesus, that's wild. <laughs> and so I'm under this tree and I'm kind of just like reclining on him. Uh, and it's a place that is a, a perfect peace and rest. And I'm like right there in the present moment. I'm not anywhere else. I'm not, what do I have to do? What do I have to get done? What haven't I got done? I'm just right there. And it's a place of just, it's amazing. And well, so that is the basis from where that song kind of started. Uh, let's see, when I get to heaven, uh, I'm trying to think of that, the, those, the lyrics on that first verse. Yeah, climb underneath climb the tree, the climb the tree. tallest tree. Yeah. And then stand upon the clouds just so I can see. Yeah, I mean, it's that space, you know. What kind of crowd reaction do you get from a song like that? Well, I'd say the main thing that happens on that song is at the end of the song, we put in an old gospel tune, uh, add it to the end, and it's uh, Jesus on the main line. So that is like the cherry on top of that song. So people just love it when they go into that section, and it's just like a, like a, like a black choir should be there singing right behind us. And we should have organ and everything. Like it feels like that at the end. It does. And we're singing all loud and boisterous. So people love that that at the end there. Because we end our set with that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, see, that reads that reminds me back in the day when you would have art only in country music usually, not not counting Elvis, but in country music back in the day, the last song on every album was usually a, a gospel song. <laughs> and and I always thought that was a cool deal. And but I also like the fact that, or I should say, I remember the days. And Ben, you would probably remember this as well. When you would have people who grew up in church, they were part of the worship team or part of the choir. And especially nowadays, part of the worship team, they step out into mainstream music. But back in the day, it's almost you're asking to be crucified. Now it's widely accepted, but I think that is with people who continue their walk with the Lord into mainstream music, I think it even makes the music better, more relevant, and that people can relate to. Yeah. And, you know, that's that topic has some, been on my mind for at least a decade. The idea that someone can step out talk about their faith in a way that's non-aggressive, uh, not, not trying to be too preachy, but just it comes out naturally because that's a part of who you are. I remember I was listening to an artist. It was on a new music playlist. And I thought, man, I love this guy. He was singing his cool song, cool harmonies. And then there was a lyric in there and after I realized, after I realized that I really liked this artist, a lyric in that song came up and I realized he was a Christian, but I didn't realize that at first. And I always think about that moment. I liked the artist first and then I realized he was a Christian. And so it's almost like that is ideal for, for someone to draw to you because of your art and because of who you are and then be like, oh my gosh, coming upon this new realization of faith or the character of God, I think that is ultra powerful. It is, and I feel the same way. I think the most important thing of all is likability. And I think if you have the likability and the audience just gravitates to you, gravitates to your songs, and then if they find out that little something special about you, like being a believer. I mean, I was stunned when I heard the song um, uh, from Larry Fleet. Um, and 
I kept listening to his album. And I'm like, wait a minute, this guy grew up in church. And, and I love the fact that people just put it out there and then let people make their own decisions. But to me, people who are growing up in church and singing in church, there's just something about their music that just rises above everybody else's. <laughs> Maybe it's something, something coming straight from the heart, you know? I, I think it is. I mean, I've interviewed people where they would say something in the interview and I'm like, wait a minute, only a believer would say something like that. And then in boldness after the interview and the recording is off, then there are times I will point blank ask them. And then yeah. you find even more uh, to discuss. But I want to ask you a question, Cassie, uh, because I read something that you recently had surgery. What happened there and how is the recovery going? Yeah, it was crazy. Um, we were on tour in Colorado, in, I don't know, August. And I woke up one morning and I couldn't sit up out of the bed. And I was like, I had to like push up like a pregnant lady. And I was like, that's weird. So I went to an urgent care and they misdiagnosed me. Uh, said I had something, even though it came back negative. And I was like, okay. And then um, actually I was misdiagnosed twice and I just kind of kept pushing through it because I was having severe pain in my pelvis, like off and on. We finished the tour out and when I got home in Nashville in September, it was happening really bad again. And so Ben was like, you should go to your doctor here. So in one week time, I saw my doctor had an ultrasound, got sent for an urgent CT scan, met with a surgeon and had surgery on Monday. They found a 23 centimeter, um, which I didn't know how big that was because I'm from Alabama. I'm just kidding. <laughs> and so I had to Google it and I was like, that's nine inches, nine inches. And so it was nine inches and it was a six pound tumor in my left ovary. And it was, um, it was crazy. Uh, and honestly, I, we just, we couldn't believe it. Like, we're like this, how, is, how is that possible that that was in there? Um, and so I had the surgery while I was in surgery, they did a biopsy while I was on the table and it came back borderline. So they also had to do a full hysterectomy. And, um, so it was a pretty, pretty, uh, I guess, tough surgery and I was in the hospital for a couple of days and Ben's mama came down and she lives in Iowa and she drove down here and she cooked for me and she waited on me hand and foot. Um, cause you really need a mama at a time like that. And my mom's not here anymore. And so it was crazy. You know, they say it takes like four to six weeks to recover. Um, but we were supposed to open for the Indigo girls two and a half weeks later. And we did. <laughs> so uh, praise God, because I, with Ben and his mama, because they both are very, they kept me on track and we did everything to the T the way that I should. I was walking at first I was walking with a cane, but I still was bound and determined, you know, and everybody has a different healing process. And so nothing against anyone that it takes longer, but I was, I was okay. And I went to the doctor for my follow-up appointment early and I was like, can I go? And he said, yeah, just be really careful. Cause I'm a very belty singer from my gut. And, um, I don't know. I, I, I just was able to do it. We, that was our first show back. We opened for them and it was great. It was an awesome time. And then I was tired, but we did it. And so I've been back and we had my six week follow up and all is well. So I'm good. Oh, well, praise God for that. And well, what was it like uh, walking out on stage, opening up for the Indi Indigo Girls? It was really cool. So it, it, we opened for them and, and Ricky Lee Jones. And so it was, honestly, if I'm just being honest, when we got the um, the schedule was released, it was the Opelika Songwriter Festival. And we looked at it, because you know, at songwriting festivals, you usually play two or three times during the week. And it was our first time to play it. And we looked at it and there's main stage and there was only three people playing main stage and it had our name on there. And we were like, I don't think that's right. That must have been a mistake. And then we looked on other parts of the site and we're like, well, if it's a mistake, they made it twice. <laughs> so we had no idea. They didn't tell us or anything. And we just saw the schedule and we're like, this is crazy. Um, it was awesome to be able to open for them. 
and to just be able to be back singing and to be able to do what we love and then share my experience and my story with people. And um, it was pretty special. I hope we get to do it again. Yeah, yeah, awesome. yeah you, belong, you, you two belong on the main stage. So I'm glad they got that right because, again, uh, the album one is absolutely fantastic. And, ladies and gentlemen, this is the album that is the perfect, as I said before, this is the perfect introduction to Gold Pine. And uh, if you like great music, if you have a wide listening genre of music, this needs to be added to your collection. Well, Ben and Cassie, I want to ask you a question. I understand that you've had many travels to Africa. Uh, tell us more about that experience performing there, uh, as well as what was the reason that brought you there? So we've been to Rwanda, Africa seven times. We first started going on missions trips through an organization that uh, basically visited a, a couple particular orphanages there in Rwanda. And then uh, we started leading teams to that organization. And then after that, we started just going on our, by ourselves. Uh, we've got a lot of friends over there in Rwanda, and so we can get around the country pretty well. We're familiar with it. But, uh, you know, a main thing about Rwanda is that we have a sponsored daughter over there. Her name is Kevine, and she's about 16 years old. Mm -hmm. And we've been able to sponsor her for about 10 years. And you know, a lot of people sponsor kids and they don't get to meet them ever. So I feel honored that we've had the opportunity to seven times go over there and spend a couple of days with her. Mm -hmm. And it's just, Rwanda is a, a beautiful place. It really is. And we've written some songs about it that we might record on the next record. Um, but we always bring an, an old guitar over there when we go and there's a particular song that we sing for the kids over there that they absolutely love. And it's an old Hank Williams senior song called, I saw the light. You probably know it. And from the first time we played it over there, I mean, the kids, and we play it like more bluegrassy kind of upbeat and the kids are just jumping around and start singing and you know, they, their first language is in English. And we'd go back the next year and they'd be singing that song back to us like before we even got the guitar out in English. I mean, think about that. A year later, they remembered another language song from a visitor that came. I mean, it's just wild. And well, so that's, that's the greatest thing about, you know, making this whole planet smaller. And especially when it comes to language and, and English, for an example, they don't know English. It's rare if they're even taught that, if they even have the opportunity to go to school. But it's music that is, can be one of the greatest teachers for everybody. You know, I hear about uh, people that move to America that can't speak English, but they learn by watching television here. But, you know, singing along with a song, I think that is just, you know, that that is just, that's God at work. That is a miracle in its own right. Uh, to see that and hear that happen. I mean, that is an inspiring story. It is. There is, you're right. There's something about music uh, that if we just strip all of the extra stuff away, it really is an amazing thing that God has created. I mean, it makes you feel things. It makes you learn things. Like you said, it connects with people across the globe. It makes helps you memorize things. I mean, music it really is powerful well yeah it's funny you said that it helps you memorize things because one of the uh, ladies and gentlemen and you've heard me talk about this before and there's two things that i always like to teach when it comes to music if you're working if you're writing or whatever you're doing and you add music to your background it creates a better creative process it can yeah. help you work uh, more effectively and efficiently and productivity rises. They've already proven that in research. At the same time, I always tell parents, get your kid to learn a musical instrument, guitar, piano, even drums, because you're using your hands, your eyes, your ears, and for some, maybe their voice. And even on the medical side, even those that end up with Alzheimer's disease, the very last thing they ever lose is the ability to play music. 
So it's that strong of a force around us. But look, we all know that the Lord kicked out Satan out of heaven and he was actually ahead of the choir. <laughs> so music plays a huge part in our lives. And uh, But I was on Instagram, I was on your Instagram page, and I saw pictures of your tour van So uh, that you're actually building out or have you completed completed that build? It is finished and we've been touring in that van for a, one year. Yeah, wow. So, so, uh, so what did you do to it to kind of fit your, your, uh, your travels? Yeah. So this is actually the second tour van that I've built out and we bought a Ram pro master, just a straight cargo van, you know, nothing in the back. And we watched a million YouTube and Instagram videos to figure out a floor plan of what we wanted because we knew we were going to be in it all the time. So I took off work and I built this thing out. I spent full time on it for probably three months or so. Mm -hmm. And just in our driveway back here, built the whole thing out and it's got the, everything in it. Queen, queen mattress, running water, electric fridge. It's got heat, air in the back, TV, TV microwave. Yeah. I mean, it really is our super tiny home on the road. <laughs> Well, Home so for you, does it cut, I mean, uh, so you just stay in that in RV parks or do you just park it at a, a motel or hotel? There's so many places you can park it. Uh, I mean, truck stops are a big thing because they're open 24 hours. Uh, you can park at a lot of Walmarts, Cracker Barrels, and you can get away with parking in hotel parking lots, you know, for one night at a time. So a lot of options. Oh, well, that's cool, man. That, yeah. If it wasn't for you too, we probably wouldn't be able to learn anything. Oh, uh, no. Yeah. Yeah. I can't imagine being, uh, trying to do that, what, 20 or whatever years ago, trying to look, go to the library and look up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Buy a popular mechanics magazine or hot rod magazine and try to figure all that stuff out. Well, since y'all been married for 13 years, what's it like life on the road? Uh, being each other's faces 24 hours a day. <laughs> it's awesome. Um, it actually is awesome. We, we do spend a lot of time together, but one thing that we do, we're pretty scrappy too, um, or I, I, I really take pride in that. So we have, I have a gym membership at Planet Fitness. And so Planet Fitness, if you're a Black Card member, you can bring one guest a day. So that's how we shower when we're on the road. But what we do is we, that's like our alone time. So we go to the gym and he works out or sits on uh, a machine and listens to a podcast. And then I text him and say, are you going to do anything? Get off the machine. And then, so that's when we have like our, you know, our alone time. We work out, we um, listen to podcasts, we sit in the chairs. And so that's, that's some nice time every day that we kind of have on our own. But honestly, it's, it's, it's all we know. And we have such a, I know it's such a unique relationship. I know that a lot of people, they, every show people are always like, I don't know how you do it. I couldn't work with my husband, but I honestly could not, I wouldn't want to work without him. Like he makes everything better and we have a lot of fun and uh, we just balance it. And we make sure that we have a healthy, a healthy balance. You know, we make date nights every week, even on the road. And so we just make it important because it is, but it's a lot of fun. Sometimes it can be challenging. You know, it is a very tiny space and, you know, sometimes you just want to be able to go into a separate room. And so he just goes and he sits in the, in the, in the, in the front seat <laughs> and that's his room. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, let me ask you this because, um, you know, for each of you, uh, touring, uh, and this is the same question for each of you, so you can each answer it. What is the most favorite place you've ever been to? Um, as far as like where we've played at? <laughs> yes, for touring. Um, so it's a place you've never heard of, and um, it's a small, beautiful community, county, um, town and it's the, the town is called Marysville, Kansas. And, you know, we've played two, probably three shows there 
And we recently, this past year, did an artist in residency um, for three weeks. And they brought us there for three weeks. But the thing about it is, is the community, the people, they love music so much. And I just remember the first time, so a, a couple of them saw us in Nashville and they were on convention and then they reached out to us to come play and we were like where like, what is this and when we played there um they sold out i don't know like 150 people came and it was just i was like are there 150 people in this town like where are we but they love music and the arts department um is just so involved and they just love arts and they love music and whenever we went there for the artist in residency, we spent one week in each town of the county and we like went into the schools and we worked with the kids and we did um, all kinds of events. And it was all free and open to everyone in the community just to bring them closer together and to give them arts for free. And I don't know, I just will, Marysville, Kansas will always hold a special place in my heart. What about you, Ben? We recently, uh, I'll, I'll speak to my favorite venue that we've played. We recently played a place in uh, near Detroit um, in Lake Orion, Michigan, and it's a venue called 20 Front Street. And it's kind of like a very miniature Ryman Auditorium to where it probably only seats 60 people, but it's set up like it was made to be a venue. Like all the pews are you know, half semicircle around with stepped up um, stadium seating, I guess it would be. And then it's all wood around the room. And I think they even had some kind of like door frame from India that was all intricate, you know, carved wood. Like it was just one of the most amazing looking venues. But not only that, is that everybody there at that venue wanted to be there. The uh, the staff they wanted to be there and you know most venues we go to it's like somebody's jaded uh somebody's means uh no they are nobody wants to be there but this place was like a shining light they were encouraging they weren't trying to get out of the building right away afterwards yeah. the owner prayed with us before we went on stage mm -hmm. i mean <laughs> I can't See, I was it. about to say something. I'm thinking there's a spirit in that building. There and is. at the moment you said that about the owner, I went, uh-huh, there's yes. the answer right there. There is yes. an amazing spirit. We know what that spirit is. And I, I bet the acoustics must be amazing. Yes, they have a sweet Bose sound system. But just all that wood, man, it's just, it's a yeah, great atmosphere. That, I love that place, too. So what's on the horizon for your music in 2023? So we just got back from a tour. We were gone for two months. So now we're here in Nashville for this month and we're trying to record for the next album. I know it feels like ours just came out, but if we don't stay a year or eight months ahead of, of another album, we're falling behind. So we're trying to record a lot this month maybe come up with uh come out with a new album in 2023 if you but don't let us rest you can't rest <laughs> but well, I, yeah. I get that because especially being independent artists you've got to keep grinding got to keep pushing got to keep moving that's what it's all about but ladies and gentlemen you are looking at ben and cassie wilson the duo called gold pine they are absolutely fantastic i say that from my heart because I've listened to the album one over and over and over again. You will love the songs. This is what radio needs. And, but more importantly, this is an album you need in your collection. So head over to their website and Ben and Cassie, give us your website real quick. Our website is goldpinemusic.com and all our social medias are at goldpinemusic. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, head over to goldpinemusic.com. And again, what do I always say? We support our artists. Buy the album, buy the merch, and when they come to your town, buy the ticket. Go see them. Enjoy them live. That's what this is all about. 
And uh, hey, if you you're going to become fans of Gold Pine, I already am. And and tell you the truth, Ben and Cassie, I absolutely could not wait uh, to have you on the program and to just to have this discussion because you two are absolutely fantastic people. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. So glad to be here. Thank, Thank you, for, you having for having us. Oh, anytime. And again, you're welcome back. And, and I can't wait when the second album comes out. And because uh, we can't wait to uh, promote that one as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, Gold Pine, the brand new debut album, one. Check it out, goldpinemusic.com. And as for me, I'll be right back with more.